No. All right, so what we're here having today... Oh wait, I'm sorry. That's not my thing, I can't do that. I've got this new thing. You guys keep asking me about it. This is unrelated. But this is what we're after. This is the uh, Funny Playing Game Boy Color. That's interesting. Um, the new laminated backlight kit for the Game Boy Color from Funny Playing. I'm going to dump that out. Looks like we get a mask, a sensor, one wire, two wire, three wire, uh, 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 the ribbon itself, and the screen assembly. So this is going to be pretty similar to their previous uh, Q5 based kit, and by the way, I call these Q5 kits. Every kit that uses this LCD, I call a Q5 kit because this LCD is out of a BlackBerry Q5. That is the only reason for that name. It's just to differentiate between the different LCDs that are used. Uh, these kits, like the Game Boy Advance and the older Game Boy Color ones, the ones that use these LCDs, I call them 9380 kits because, guess what, they use an LCD out of a BlackBerry 9380, the more you know. Anyway. It's going to be pretty similar to the old kit, except that the uh, obvious big difference here is that the screen lens is laminated to the LCD. Uh, that does make install quite a bit more difficult if you do not have one of Funny Playing Shells, but luckily they've got you taken care of on that route too. Um, there is no reason this cannot be installed on an OEM shell, but you will need to do quite a bit of trimming. Now I went with black this time around. I usually go with a clear shell so that uh, you guys can see any potential like uh, bleed from the LCD, but I've done plenty of Q5 kits in a Game Boy Color. At this point, it is the exact same LCD, so it's not gonna make a huge difference one way or the other. But anyway, if you wanna install this kit, in an OEM shell and you do not want to get one of the funny playing kits, you have to trim out the inside so that this can be allowed to slip in and underneath all of that. I'll, we'll, we'll get to that more in a bit, but you have, to, you have to cut out basically all of the window here. This shelf is just to keep this located. It will work without it, but you might want like a bracket or something. Uh, to my knowledge, there isn't one yet. Um, but otherwise, these shells work more or less about how you'd expect. I have heard some reports of uh, some issues with some buttons, uh, but we'll, we'll investigate that more in a bit. I'm sure you guys want to see the kit first, so let's get into it. And tonight's donor is coming out of the... Uh, junk pile here. Uh, one of the last few remaining Game Boy Colors I do have that does work, um, if you can't tell from my incredibly cryptic notes, uh, this thing does work. I have repaired it, um, but it doesn't have any sound because there's a problem with the speaker, and we'll, we'll, we'll see more what that's about in a bit, uh, but I believe, short of taking apart some of my other Game Boy Colors, which I will probably end up doing going forward. Um, I think this is my last working one. That isn't modded or set in the do not mod pile. So the reason this one is having audio issues is 
because of something that tends to happen to a lot of Game Boy Colors over the years, uh, this one especially, I have already fixed the issue, but I have done a video on it. I don't know if this is that specific Game Boy, but uh, long story short, the, ele the three electrolytic capacitors that Nintendo use in these things, they have a shelf life of about 10 years, and this thing is 20 years old. They go bad. Uh, if you ever tear open a Game Boy and the speaker looks something like this, it's kind of doesn't look like it's coming out too well on the camera, but you can see it looks like it's basically just rusty. Uh, that is a uh, prime candidate for recapping. That is exactly what the speaker in this one looked like before I removed it. Um, I actually ended up removing it because it did still work. I just needed a speaker for something else and then never bothered with this one. But I did end up recapping this one too. But anyway, there you go. If your speaker looks like that, it's time to recap your Game Boy. If it still works, I mean, by all means, keep using it, but... Oh yeah, this motherboard is not original to this shell. You can tell because the silk screen is yellow. This was probably in one of the clear Game Boys that I did a build on. But either way, fixing the speaker is easy. Now that funny playing makes these bad boys. We'll just solder a new one in. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to route these wires because I don't really feel like trimming them. But I don't want them to be too absurdly long. See how many times I can drop this thing. So the easy way to do this, literally to just melt the solder and then stick the wire in the hole. Let the solder solidify, move on. I mean, you can use a solder sucker and clear out the holes and do it the proper way, but you're going to have to like hold it in there while you solder anyway, so I think that's, I think that's the easiest way to do it. Anyway, let us go ahead and test this thing out. I'm going to reassemble this in the original shelf for the meantime. Because we want to get some numbers for power usage. I just want to get a speaker in this thing first. Two point four volts. Same game as usual. Think, pretty sure. And oh, look at that! We have sound now. Oh, this screen is super messed up. Good thing we're putting a backlight kit in it. Looks like it's got some UV damage. Anyway, oh, we're not in the place.
place I'm usually in. I'm gonna go ahead and save. And in the overworld, at 2.4 volts, it is pulling uh, 83 to 99 milliamps. 83 to 101, which is pretty much on par for what we do expect. But it's always good to have a baseline number. And then let's go ahead and try out the kit. I am going to remove it from the shell because we shouldn't need that anymore. And I am fairly certain we need to do some soldering to even test this, but see how far we can get. Yeah, I thought so. That's okay though. Let's cut power. And so the little short black wire that it comes with, we need to solder to the C pin of the power switch. Get some solder on there to tin that up. Maybe. Sorry, it's at a bad angle. That's better. Nice and uh, solid joint there. And then we will solder it to the ribbon labeled power. Oh, good lord. Let's fix that. All right, and we're not going to tug on that to make sure that's a solid joint, because that is a good way to lift pads. But if all goes well, we should be good. Let's try it out. Ta-da! So at this default brightness level, 
I don't know what it is. We'll uh, explore more on that in a bit. At 2.4 volts, this is pulling quite a bit more power. Uh, that looks like 394 to... Uh, 365 to 394 so quite a significant impact on the batteries uh, but we can probably lower the brightness to bring that down a little bit but that will require more soldering uh, if it wasn't evident already soldering is required here but now that we have it tested outside the case we have some baselines for power we can continue this install Always, always, always test it before installing for multitude of reasons. One, um, most vendors who sell these things say to do that, but also because you don't want to get this installed in your in your shell and then realize that it's broken. You know, you don't. It's, it's never a good time when that happens. Alright, so this, oh, there are a few things we should check first. Uh, first and foremost, there are no protrusions in these fill ports in the bottom corners, and there was one more thing we were supposed to check, I believe, it was to make sure that there's nothing protruding on the inside here, but otherwise, this just slips in from the front. You would want to remove the adhesive on the screen, but I haven't done that yet because I haven't stuck it down. I just want to show how that fits. And that goes in just like that. Easy peasy. Pop that out. Something a little bit extra for this. Just trying to get the paper peeled up because I can't get my fingers in there. And it's just on the left and right. We don't have to worry about it not going all the way around because the lens is already laminated to the LCD. Cool. And then, same deal. Slip that in, make sure the uh, ribbon clears, drop it down, and there you go. Screen's in the shell. He's a peasy. So next up, there are two things. Let's go ahead and take a look at the buttons now. So where are my buttons? There. Oh god, that's disgusting. Hang on, I'm gonna go clean this. All right, that's better. Usually don't pause to do that, but that was, that was an exception. Anyway, this is an OEM start and select membrane. I just pulled that out of this Game Boy that we took apart. Uh, this is an aftermarket one. Interesting the shape difference on the two. The aftermarket one is a complete oval, whereas the OEM one is two distinct ovals joined together in the middle. Anyway, the aftermarket one, notice, isn't going in. If we look at it from the other side, you can see the buttons are recessed. They're not... This isn't going to work. The OEM one has almost the same problem. It fits better. You can see start goes through, but select is a little bit shy. You know, if you press it down, it's not coming back. Unless I, like, really refund it on the other side. Um, I believe there are funny playing buttons. I don't have any of the... Um, I do have his new buttons. There's just no like start and select with them. 
Uh, but there are these new buttons from Extreme Rate that I was going to do a separate video on and just haven't yet. Here they are. What's interesting about these is they have uh, plastic for the start and select and then a custom membrane. But you notice I drop that in there, it doesn't fit either. And Top things off. Fantastic Retro CNC here. I have his new Game Boy Color buttons, which actually uses a pretty similar design to the Extreme Rate, but as far as I know, his were around first. Those don't fit either. Uh, so what's what's the problem? What's what's the point of going through all that, Mako? What's what's your deal? All right. So if we look at this shell, you can see in the select button itself, like if we just look through the holes, look at my white desk mat or my clear desk mat through the holes, you can see the hole for the start button is just, it's bigger. That's why the OEM membrane seemed to work a little bit better on start than it did on select. Both of these holes, however, have a little bit of flashing in them. And what flashing is, when you injection mold apart for something, there are two molds that fit together just like this. And when you injection mold, sometimes plastic goes in between the two little molds in a space, in a void. Uh, and that leftover plastic, which ends up attached to the part you're molding, is called flashing. That's just a little bit extra. You can cut it off. It should be good enough. If you can't cut it off, uh, like you can't really get in there. The other option is a file and I'm just gonna do a quick test fit. Yeah, that'll be perfect. Don't want to use the flat one, but you do want to use, I don't think the uh, circular round one will fit, but the, uh, the curvy one. I don't, know. I don't know what you call that should fit just do some real light passes I'm barely putting any pressure because we do not want to mar the shell we just want to get rid of the excess plastic that's not supposed to be there Valder is, Valder being funny playing, is already aware of the issue. Uh, if you don't want to have to deal with this, I suggest waiting for newer shells. It is a bit of a bummer though. But that should be all we need to do. Let's do the test fit. So start works, select does not. Select getting caught. It's a little tight, but I think it'll work. I could spend another few minutes filing, well, another 30 seconds, I guess, filing it down. OEM seems to work just fine. Not worried about that at all. The extreme rate button, it's real tight still. At least in that hole, let's try the other one. Yeah, it's still it's still real tight in both of them, so we'll need to file more to use that. And then the retro CNC button. I mean, it's tight, but it's not unusably so. It works a little bit better than the extreme rate one, I'd say. Yeah, we should be good. Drop those in. 
I suppose I should test it with the uh, OEM buttons. Uh, well, what's the point of having custom buttons if you don't ever get to use them? Oh, Bamako, you need a custom membrane for the custom start and select. Yes, you do. But we remedy that by uh, taking aftermarket membrane or OEM if you're uh, really feeling up to it, and you just snip off the rubber part. All right, so let's go ahead and cut that down. And with these buttons, less is more. You can always come back and cut off more button. But you can't really go back and put button on. So it's a little bit of a balancing act. I cut off slightly too much, but that's about what I did there. You can see I left some of the... Uh, thing on there. Okay, anyway. Connecting this up is kind of annoying, especially with this already soldered onto the Game Boy, but it will be okay. You do not want to just lay that flat and push down. That is that is a good way to ruin the screen. Best way is to line them up. You can get your fingers on both sides. And reach together. Boom. Just like that. And that's it. We still have a little bit more soldering to do, but I'm going to do an initial install and then we'll come back and, and uh, finish it up. Uh, I'm fairly certain these are the screws. No, they're not. These are the screws. We want to try and use funny playing screws. With the generic aftermarket shells, it's rarely a bad idea to reuse your original screws. In fact, nine times out of ten, that's exactly what's recommended you do. But for funny playing shells in particular, use the screws that it comes with. You will have a much better time. And it comes with an actual IR transparent LED window. How neat is that? Most of the aftermarket Game Boy Color shells do not. Of course you can just reuse your own. But... Uh, let's use the power switch.
I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually kind of disappointed that they're still doing this why screw nonsense even though you, uh, you're using custom screws in a custom Game Boy, I think I can speak for just about everyone here when I say that if it's coming with custom screws we don't need the Y ones. We can we can deal with having all JIS or even preferably all Torx, but I was hoping we would be done with that by now, but the uh, power switch is real tight. And backing these off doesn't seem to help. Let's do a full turn. Yeah, not helping. Whatever, I'll just leave it for now. All right. Uh, batteries. I'm not putting these in backwards, that's just the stupid design on these particular cells. Ta-da! Oh, let's actually do some... testing. I should test this with... Uh, Nickel metal hydride batteries instead. Give it a worst case scenario. Flash cart on nickel metal. <laughs> I, uh, I forgot I was using these metal buttons for a second. And I was just about to comment on how, uh, how amazing the D-pad feels, but um, I mean that makes sense. I've heard that the new buttons are um, not great. At least they need a little bit of modification, but these aren't technically the new buttons. Anyway, let's do some tests. So what we have here is the uh, scrolling bars test. Uh, what we're looking for is any um, any frame dropping, any screen tearing, anything of that sort. Long story short, I'm not seeing any issues with this. This looks to be running perfectly fine. There is one intentional frame drop when the S crosses the left hand side of the screen. Uh, that is the Game Boy issuing the kit a, a reset command and it is handling it pretty much flawlessly. Let us try Zelda.gb. So now we're going to look at two things that I, quite frankly, haven't seen in a while, but it's still nice to get a look at. I'm going back and forth real quick. And what we're looking at is we're seeing if there's any artifacting left over from these logs in the grass here. On the older 9380 based kits, for Game Boy Color at least, not Game Boy Advance, um, or maybe even, I don't actually remember, there was some artifacting as, as shown in the grass due to the uh, pixel overdrive that they were using. But new screen means they don't have to deal with that. The other thing we're looking at, we're checking two things on this chain here. 
the first thing is we want to make sure that it appears solid and uh, transparent and not flickering. Unfortunately, it is flickering here. I don't know how well that's coming out on camera. Um, it looks different in person because the camera is capturing at a fixed rate, whereas, believe it or not, eyes can see beyond 24 frames per second. You can see beyond 60 even, but that's besides the point. Uh, anyway, it doesn't look bad, but it's not the best we've seen. Um, the better kits, I can't remember, but I think the only better kits that we've seen were on Game Boy Advance, though. So I, I'd argue this is the best we've seen on Game Boy Color so far. Uh, the other thing is we're just double checking to make sure there's no artifacting from that chain as we're moving back and forth and... I don't see any of that. Looks great to me. And I don't think we need to test anything else while we're here. Nah. Oof. Let's move on. Alright, so I'm going to pull it apart again because I want to install this the proper way. That is to say with uh, the button controls and the uh, touch sensor. So I need to pull it all apart again. So far though I am very pleased. Go find those screws. Don't worry, they didn't go far. Okay. Oh yeah, okay. So now we need to wire up the start and select buttons. That should be pretty easy. I am going to put this behind here just to protect the uh, screen so that I don't have to remove this ribbon while I'm soldering to it real quick. Just in case. And I'm going to use the wires that it came with. Even though they are damn near twice as long as they need to be. I'm going to cut some custom wire. I'm not going to use these wires. I'm going to save them for other activities. It's nice having slack, sure, but it's a little bit too much slack, I think. Alright, I forgot which is which already. So let's beep it out. 
So I am. All right. So that is select. It probably goes to one of these four vias right here. Yep. Select goes to this bottom most of this cluster of four. Bring that in a little. Oh, my camera rig's hitting my light. But of those four little vias right there, select is the bottom one. Uh, oh, but I have that soldered to start, so let's check start. It's probably the one right next to it. Oh, nope, it's the one right above it. So start and then select. Cool, cool, cool. This is not the optimal tip for soldering to these, but. Should work. There we go. Oh, where are my tweezers? I don't know. Okay, I'll just do it this way then. This way, even though I'm not using a clear shell, the wires would be hidden. Uh, but also, nice, short, direct path. Makes wire management easy peasy. Boom. And there is the start select. I am going to swap out my buttons real quick. I want to try out the new ones. nice as these are. I haven't tried these yet. Those wires could have been even shorter if we wanted to. Ooh, that almost popped out. There we go.
Oh, I see my phone is slipping out of the holder. That is excellent. Alright, there we go. Okay, and one more thing. We have the uh, touch sensor, as it were. I hate these things, but it's kind of what we're stuck with for now. Uh, it's not specifically a touch sensor. It's more like a, um, well, I mean, I guess it is a touch sensor. It's a capacitance sensor that when you touch it, triggers something. I am looking for a piece that I've already been cutting on. What I want is to just trim off a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect because hell, this thing's not transparent. No one's ever going to see this once installed. But we're just going to stick that down there. And before we stick it on, we probably need to solder it. It goes on this pad here. And it's not quite what I wanted, but close enough. I'm going to need tweezers to get that off. I don't know how I lost the first tweezers that I already took out for this. I have gone nowhere. And yet... All right. So I am going to redo the soldering to relieve some of the pressure on that joint. Not perfect, but better. All right. Now let's slam this bad boy together. Try out the OEM switch here. See if my problem, see where my problem is. better, but it's still tighter than I'd like. Huh. That's good. I didn't expect that to fit. Alright. 
So now that we have the touch sensor, I'm going to kill these lights here. The touch sensor wherever I put it I thought it went right here. Oh, there it goes. Just had to find it. I wasn't even counting. Okay, so we have one. Good lord. I think it's me. I'm a little bit dehydrated right now. My water has been off since 10 a.m. Because, uh, reasons that are unknown to me. They keep saying, oh, it'll be on. And, uh, by the time I get the email message, it's like already past the estimate. Oh, that's really annoying. If I can't get that touch sensor, I can't use the other functions. I mean, you saw it was working, I swear. All right, well, maybe I'll have to come back to this. That's incredibly frustrating. Really don't want to take this apart again. Did I not stick it down very well? It is stuck down. I mean, that's a atrocious solder joint, but that shouldn't shouldn't affect anything. It's good enough. Right there. Let's redo that solder joint too, just in case. Yeah, that's better, as in it's not a dry joint, but, all right, let's try that out.
Alright, second try is the charm. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven brightnesses, brightnesses, yeah, seven brightness levels. It does retain that brightness level after reboots. And here is something that we have not yet discussed, but you might have picked on, picked up by now. The uh, screen logo here. That is actually from the LCD behind the lens. The reason this lens is laminated to this LCD is because on the lens, that cutout is just transparent, and that is controlled by the LCD. So as we increase the brightness, oh, come on. There it goes. As we increase the brightness of the screen, you notice the logo also gets brighter. But we can also do a few things here. If we long press that, maybe. Ah. Uh. So now I gotta find it again. Long press. There we go, we have the uh, pixel grid emulation there. There should be, I think, five different modes. Same as the uh, previous kit. Personally, I think that it's best with them off, but, you know, flip through it, decide if you like them. It should retain after reboots, and it does. Oop, let's go back there. And off. Yep, there. All right, and so we want... If we hold both start and select, we get into mode one which illuminates the game logo. And tapping start and select apparently moves the alignment up and down. I don't, I don't see that it's doing anything. The button is working. I don't know what that's supposed to do. My instructions say it moves the screen alignment up and down, but I don't I don't see that. Uh, touch again, we get boy, that is mode two. Start and select, move it left and right. Again, I'm not seeing Anything maybe you have to hold? Oh yeah, there it is. It's moving. You probably want a uh, screen alignment ROM up for that. Mine was already pretty well aligned, I think. Okay. And then mode three is the special one. There are like 26 some odd color choices. We can pick whichever color we want the logo. A little bit white and then press and hold start and select. No? Uh, 
Oh, it's good. I just set it to another color. If we exit, that should be what, yellow? There we go. Learning curve, but you get there eventually. It's pretty neat. There we go. Ah, this is what I heard so much about. Up. Left, right, down, all work great, but up. Up's not working so hot. You have to press it really hard to get it to work. Uh, there's a fix for that. Unfortunately, we have to tear this thing down one more time. So the fix for that, and hopefully this will get fixed with the uh, newer D-pads. I'm assuming those are getting a revision too, because like like the shell, you know, the start and select flashing. That's kind of kind of a bummer. Uh, but the fix is to shave down the little nubbin on the D-pad. is a shame, but that's where we're at. Do take care of your soldered stuff, like that sensor. We're going to go ahead and pop that D-pad out of there. shame because, you know, transparent, it's going to mess up that transparency, but oh well. The fix is allegedly to shape down that D-pad. Uh, I do have a file here, but I'm going to use some sandpaper because I think that'll go a little bit smoother. I'll be right back. And surprising absolutely no one, I lied about the sandpaper. So I am just going to file it down with my flat file. My notes say just a little bit, but I don't know what just a little bit is. But like the uh, retro CNC start and select, you can always take off more material, but you can't go put it back, not easily at least. So let's try that. I have it on good authority that this works, so I'm pretty confident. My only concern is whether I took off enough material. Because you gotta put the whole thing back together again just to try it.
I'm actually going to cheat a little bit and hook up my uh, power leads. <clears throat> so it's still on. Yeah. A and B feel great otherwise. Yeah, there we go. That's it. So, you really don't have to take off a lot of material at all. It's uh, almost to the point where you could probably just like rub it on your jeans or something. Rub it on your shirt for a few minutes. That's all you need to do. There you go. All right, so one more thing. A, B, start, select. So what that is, that is the soft reset in Pokemon. Apparently, if you press start and select together at the same time, but without pressing them long enough to trigger the uh, menu options here, it glitches out the touch sensor and that just stops working. And to be honest, it could just be that I'm not finding the Jesus thing again, but I'm touching the actual sensor here and I'm not getting anything. The fix is to either power cycle your Game Boy or press and hold start and select till you get into the menu and then press and hold until you leave the menu again and then it is supposed to start working and as you can see, it is now working. So there you go. Um, do I like this kit? Yeah, I really like this kit. The laminated uh, LCD, the, let me start that sentence over. The lamination puts the LCD a lot closer to the lens than any other backlight kit right now, and it just looks really, really good. It is I'd say the best looking kit for Game Boy Color yet. I'm trying to grab another Game Boy comparison, but the only thing I have is this wink wink nudge nudge Game Boy Pocket. Um, but you see how much further away that screen is. You can see it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't have the same look as this. I think this is really, really great. And quite frankly, I hope we get the same thing for um, for this, for the Game Boy Pocket, that would be fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, there are a few little bugs with both the shell, the buttons, and the kit itself. Like I said, if you happen to hit start and select without holding it long enough to trigger the menu, it does break the touch sensor until you power cycle the thing or until you go through the menu again. That's far from a deal breaker, I think. That is... I think every funny playing kit has had some weird quirk, um, and by far this is my favorite weird quirk because it is such a minor issue. Uh, the previous Game Boy Color kit had that like last column pixel display issue. Uh, remember the first Game Boy Advance kit? Yeah, that was great. Uh, <laughs> the second Game Boy Advance kit, that was it's pretty good. Oh, and now we're on the um, the ITA one. I don't have the whole thing, but I don't know. It's pretty good. Um, so yeah, like I said, there are a few little quirks, but as long as you can, you know, file out the start and select to get your buttons working, file down the little nubbin on the D-pad to get your D-pad working, and as long as you don't mind that start and select issue, then yeah, it's it's really good. I, I'm really digging this so far. Um, I'm probably gonna I'm gonna play around with this in a few more configurations see what else it can do uh, but before I leave you I do want to spend a couple minutes talking about the shell itself it doesn't go together very smoothly um, in that like there, there's some real gaps until you throw the screws in 
but once you have the screws in it does it does seat pretty nicely um, it does that fitment without the screws in it does give me some concern about long-term durability but I can't really test that without just using this thing long term so I can only speculate at this point um, it's probably fine I'm probably being over cautious but I just I don't I don't like that um, another thing the text stood out to me on the cutouts and for context here is an OEM Game Boy. It's different. I don't know what about it specifically is different, but it, it's just, it's standing out to me. Not in a bad way. On this side, I can see that it's because that's a different font. That's not the bottom. Yeah, putting them side by side, I honestly can't tell you what I think is weird about it. I just think it's weird. There's something, something about it. I don't know if it's because this text like has a flat top with like a sharp edge, whereas this is rounded over. But this is a really worn down Game Boy, so that could just be wear and tear on this thing. I don't know. It is, it's really good. It's just, it, it's standing out to me for some reason. I don't know what it is. Uh, another thing, I really glossed over this, is the uh, battery compartment. You can see it's nice and flat. There is no weird ridge in the middle. That does not affect, as you saw, that does not affect any of the compatibility with uh, normal double A's. The intention for that is so you can use a, not this one in particular, but so that you can use a lithium ion battery with your build. Uh, I will probably not be exploring that more, but it is a very nice option to have. Uh, and last, it didn't come with stickers. I think that's kind of weird. Every other shell came with stickers. I don't know if that was just because I got lucky and won the shell lottery and just happened to not get stickers. Um, my order was a little bit custom, as you saw. <laughs> so if I didn't get stickers, that's fine. But if these shells just don't come with stickers, that's a little weird. Um, not too big of a deal because you can just peel off your old one. or. Um, Retro Game Repair Shop actually has these like holographic stickers. Um, I was just about to say I don't have them, but I actually do. They're on the back of this Game Boy. I like these. I think these are fantastic stickers. I think they look really good, and I think they would look kick-ass on this. And I regret not ordering more because, oh no, now I have to place another order. But, yeah. Um... Speaking of Retro Game Repair Shop, I do want to thank them for sending me this kit, uh, the shell and the buttons to check out. Um, super cool, really glad that they're able to help me out so I can I can show this content on my channel. Um, I help them, they help me, so on and so forth. Uh, really great shop, I've been really pleased with them. I recommend checking them out. I will throw some links in the description. Uh, of course, if you want to, you can get this stuff direct from Funny Playing as well. If you are not in the US, um, that's probably the better option because Retro Game Repair Shop currently only ships to the US. But if you are in the US, their shipping is significantly faster than Funny Playing's. Just throwing that out there. Um, anyway, that's all I've got. I will go ahead and update my spreadsheet with the uh, power usage information, brightness measurements, throw it all in the description. There will be a link to that other video where I did the uh, caps on either this Game Boy or another Game Boy. Um, and probably some other stuff that I'll think of at the last minute. Or stuff that I said I would put in there and totally forgot. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching guys. 
Have a fantastic day and uh, keep cool. Oh, sorry. Quick addendum. This thing. You saw me pull it out at the beginning and then I proceeded to absolutely never touch it again. Uh, I still am not 100% sure what this is for, but speculation leads me to believe it is for light bleed on the LCD given the size and uh, cutouts. I didn't use it because I had a transparent or a trans um, opaque, <laughs> that's the word, I had an opaque shell this time around. Uh, but I'm guessing this big sticker is for the back of the screen and then this little sticker is for that little bit in the front. So if you have it on and there is a little bit of a gap between the shell and the lens. so. You might see some screen through there. You can use that little sticker to uh, kind of block that out. It's kind of silly if that's what that's for, that they put their uh, logo on there. Because you might see that through the gap as well, but it is what it is. Um, Got to thank them for including it, even if I didn't use it. Uh, but anyway, that's all for me. Catch you next time.